Yusuf, Joseph. With the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful. Alif, Lam, Ra. I am Allah, the all-seeing. These are the verses of the perfect book, containing luminous truths that tell the right from the wrong. We have indeed revealed this Qur'an, which explains its object eloquently well, that you may abstain from evils. We narrate rightly to you with the best explanation, because we reveal to you this Qur'an. Otherwise, you were of those not possessed of the requisite knowledge before this. Remember the time when Joseph said to his father, My dear father, I have seen in a vision eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them falling down prostrate before God because of me. He said, My dear son, relate not your vision to your brothers, lest they should intrigue against you, for Satan is to a human being an enemy disuniting. And thus shall it be as he has shown you in this vision. Your Lord will make you his chosen one, and impart you knowledge of the true interpretation of divine sayings, and will perfect his favors upon you, and upon the family of Jacob, just as he perfected it formerly upon two of your forefathers, Abraham and Isaac. Verily your Lord is all-knowing, all-wise. The fact is that there are many signs in the account of Joseph and his brothers for the inquirers. Recall when they, the brothers of Joseph, said to one another, Surely Joseph and his brother Benjamin are dearer to our father than we are, though we are a formidable party. Surely our father is cherishing a love that has gone too far. So you had better either kill Joseph or remove him to some distant land. In this way, your father's favor will be exclusively yours. After that, you can repent and become a pious people. At this, a speaker among them said, If you are bent upon doing something at all, do not kill Joseph, but put him into the dark depths of the dry well. Perhaps some caravan of travelers may pick him out. On making this resolution, they went to their father and said, Our father, why do you not trust us with regard to Joseph, while as a matter of fact we are his sincere well-wishers? Send him forth with us for an outing to-morrow, that he may enjoy himself and play. Surely we will keep guard over him. He said, It worries me that you should take him away. Moreover, I fear lest a wolf should devour him while you are heedless of him. They said, if the wolf were to devour him in spite of the fact we are a formidable party, in that case we shall be indeed losers. So when after forcing their father, they took him away and agreed to put him into the depths of a dry well, and carried their plan out, we revealed to him, You shall certainly tell them one day of this treacherous doing of theirs, while they perceive not and they came weeping to their father at nightfall. They said, Our father, we went forth racing with one another and left Joseph behind with our belongings, and, and the wolf devoured him. But you would never believe us, though we be the truthful ones. And to assure their father, they came to him with stains of false blood on Joseph's shirt. He, Jacob, said, This is not true. But you yourselves have made a malicious thing seem fair to you. So now showing patience is befitting for me. And it is Allah alone whose help can be sought to avert what you describe. Now there came a caravan of travelers, and they sent their water drawer to fetch water, and he let down his bucket into the well. And behold, he cried, Oh, glad tidings, here is a young boy. So they, Joseph's brothers, presented him in this way as if a piece of merchandise, and Allah was well aware of their doings. And they, the brothers of Joseph, sold him, claiming him to be their slave to the travelers. 
sold him for a trifling price, a few dirhams, and they were not even desirous of it. And Joseph was taken to Egypt and resold there. The man from Egypt who bought him from the travelers said to his wife, Make his stay honorable. He may prove useful to us, or we may adopt him as a son. In this way did we grant Joseph an honorable position in the country, and we did it that we might impart to him knowledge of the interpretation of some divine sayings. And Allah has full power over his decree, but most people do not know this. And when he attained his age of full strength, we granted him judgment and knowledge, and thus do we reward the doers of good deeds to others. Now the woman in whose house he was putting up sought to seduce him against his will, and she bolted the doors well and said, Now come, I am ready to receive you. He, Joseph, said, How can it be possible? I seek refuge with Allah. He alone is my Lord. He has made my stay with you honorable. Verily the wrongdoers never flourish. And she made up her mind with regard to him, and he made up his mind with regard to her, and would have fallen into her snares as the temptations were so strong, if he had not seen the manifest evidence of his Lord. It happened thus, so that we might turn away from him every evil and indecency. Surely he was one of our purified servants. And both of them ran for the door, one trying to outdo the other. And in the struggle, she tore his shirt from behind. They encountered her husband all of a sudden by the door. She said, There can be no punishment less than imprisonment or some other painful torture for the man who intended evil with your wife. He, Joseph, said, No. It is not so as she describes, but she it was who sought to seduce me against my will. Now a learned witness of her own family bore a circumstantial evidence, saying, If his shirt has been torn from the front, then she speaks the truth, and he is of the liars. But if his shirt has been torn from behind, then she is a liar, and he speaks the truth. So when he, her husband, saw his shirt torn from behind, he at once understood the truth of the matter, and said to his wife, This is surely a deceiving device which you women practice. Your cunning device is indeed great. Turning to Joseph, he said, Joseph, leave the matter alone, and you, woman, seek forgiveness for your sin. It is you, of course, who are at fault. And the women talked in the city. The wife of the Aziz seeks to seduce her young slave against his will. His love has indeed penetrated deep in her heart. Indeed, we see her in obvious error in going too far in her love. And when she heard of their sly whisperings and taunting remarks, she sent for them and prepared a repast for them. Then on the women's arrival, she gave to each one of them a knife to eat fruit therewith, and said to Joseph then, Come forth in their presence. So when they saw him, they found him a dignified personality, and cut their hands through wonder, and said, Glory be to Allah, he is not a human being, he is but a noble angel. She said, So you have seen, this is he about whom you blamed me. I did seek to seduce him against his will, but he preserved himself from sin. Yet I tell him aloud, if he does not do what I bid him, he shall certainly be imprisoned, and he shall indeed be of the humiliated ones. Hearing this, Joseph said, My lord, the prison is more to my liking than that to which they call me to, and unless you turn away their guile from me, I might yield to their allurement and be of those devoid of knowledge. So his Lord accepted his prayer and turned away their guile from him. Verily, he is all hearing, all knowing. Then it occurred to them 
after they had examined all the circumstances and signs of Joseph's innocence, that they had better imprison him for a time. So Joseph was consigned to the prison. And with him there entered the prison two young men. One of them said to him, I see myself in a dream, pressing grapes. And the other said, I see myself carrying upon my head bread of which the birds are eating. Inform us of the interpretation of these dreams, for we surely find you of the doers of good to others. He said, Do not worry. I shall inform you of the interpretation of these dreams before the meal you two are given comes to you. This, my ability to interpret, you should bear in mind, is a part of that knowledge which my Lord has imparted to me. I have indeed renounced the creed of the people who do not believe in Allah, and who, moreover, are disbelievers in the hereafter. And I have followed the creed of my fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is not proper for us to associate anything as a partner with Allah. That he taught us unity of God is entirely due to Allah's grace upon us and upon other people. But most people do not render thanks for this blessing. My two fellow prisoners, what is better, diverse and numerous gods, or Allah, the one, the most supreme? You worship nothing apart from him but some mere imaginary names coined by you and by your fathers. Allah has sent down no authority for worshipping that. The judgment rests with Allah alone. He has commanded that you shall worship none but Him alone. That is the right and lasting faith, yet most people know it not. My two fellow prisoners, as for one of you, he will pour out wine for his Lord to drink, and as for the other, he shall be crucified, so that the birds will eat flesh from off his head. The matter about which you inquired stands decreed. And he said to the one of the two whom he knew would be released, Mention me to your Lord. But Satan made him forget to mention Joseph to his Lord, so that he, Joseph, remained confined in the prison for a few years. Now it so happened that one day the king said, I saw in a dream seven fat kine, which seven lean ones were eating, and seven green ears of corn, and as many others withered. You nobles of the court, explain to me the real significance of my dream if you can interpret dreams. They said, These are confused dreams, and we do not know the interpretation of such confused dreams. And of the two prisoners, the one who had got his release and who now recalled Joseph to his mind after a long time said, I will inform you of its true interpretation. Therefore send me for the purpose to Joseph in prison. So he went to Joseph in the prison and exclaimed, Joseph, O oh the man of truth, explain to us the real significance of a dream in which seven fat kine, which seven lean ones devour and of seven green ears of corn and as many others withered, so that I may return to the people, and they may know the interpretation and thereby your exalted position. He, Joseph, replied, You shall sow for seven years, working hard and continuously, and let what you have harvested remain in its ear, excepting a little whereof you may eat. Then there shall follow seven years of famine, of great severity, and these years shall consume all the stores you have laid by in advance for them except a little which you may have preserved. Then thereafter shall come a year of rains, in which people shall be relieved, and in which season they will press fruit and seeds. And the king, after hearing the interpretation by Joseph, said, Bring him to me. But when the messengers came to him, he said, Go back to your lord, and ask him on my behalf. How does the matter deserving of your attention stands with regard to the women who cut their hands? For my Lord has full knowledge of their crafty designs. The king then sent for the ladies, and to them he said, What was that important matter in reality that you had in view when you sought to seduce Joseph against his will? They said, 
he kept away from committing sin for the sake of Allah. We did not perceive the least evil intention on his part. The wife of the Aziz said, Now the truth has come to light at last. It was I who sought to seduce him against his will, and most surely he is of the truthful. When the news was brought to Joseph, he said, This course of action I adopted so that he, the Aziz, might know that I had not betrayed him in his absence, and that Allah suffers not the device of the unfaithful to succeed. Yet I do not hold myself to be free from weakness, for the commanding self is surely prone to enjoin evil, except on whom my Lord has mercy. My Lord is, of course, protector against sins, ever merciful. And the king said, Bring him to me. I will make him my special attaché. And when he, Joseph, came and spoke to him, he, the king, said, From this day you hold a notable position of honor and trust with us. Joseph said, Appoint me over the treasurers of the land, for I am a careful keeper and possessed of knowledge of the job. That is how we granted Joseph high power in the country. He wielded authority therein wherever he chose. We bestow our mercy on whomsoever we will, and we suffer not the reward of the doers of excellent deeds to be lost. Yet those who believe and have been guarding against sin and dutiful shall have a much better reward in the hereafter. And in the years of famine, Joseph's brothers came from Canaan to Egypt, and they presented themselves to him. But though he knew them, they recognized him not. When he had provided them with their provision, he said, When you come next, bring me your brother from your father's side. Do you not see that I give full measure of corn, and I am the best of hosts? But if you do not bring him to me, there shall be no more measure of corn for you from me, nor shall you find access to me. They said, we will certainly persuade his father to part with him, and we are sure to do it. And he said to his servants, Put their cash, they paid for the corn, in their saddlebags, and to himself, that they may recognize it as benevolence, when they return to their family, and perhaps they may come back with his brother on this account. So when they returned to their father, they said, Our father, a further measure of corn has been denied us, unless we take our brother Benjamin with us. Therefore send our brother with us that we may have our measure of corn, and we will surely be able to take due care of him. Jacob said, Shall I trust you with him, as I trusted you with his brother before? Allah is the best guardian, and he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. And when they unpacked their goods, they found their cash too returned to them. They said, Our father, what more should we desire? Here is our cash returned to us. And if Benjamin accompanies us, we will make the best use of it. We will bring food for our family, and we will take care of our brother. And we shall have the measure of a camel load in addition. That measure of corn we have already brought is a light one and so little and insufficient. He said, Never will I send him with you until you give me a solemn pledge in the name of Allah that you shall surely bring him to me unless it be that you yourselves are beset with difficult circumstances. When they had given him their pledge, he said, Allah shall be guardian over what we have agreed. And he also said on their departure, My sons, Reaching Egypt, enter the city not by one gate, rather enter it by different gates. Yet I can avail you not against the decree of Allah. The decision only rests with Allah. In Him do I put my trust, and in Him let all who would trust put their trust in the like manner. And when they entered the city after the manner their father had bidden them, it could not at all help them against the decree of Allah. All that it came to was that Jacob's desire he had in his mind 
was thus satisfied, and his purpose achieved, and he was surely possessed of knowledge, because we had imparted full knowledge to him. But most people do not know these things. When they entered upon Joseph, he betook his brother to himself for restful lodging, making him his personal guest. He, Joseph, said to Benjamin, I am your real brother, Joseph, so now do not grieve over what they have been doing. When he had provided them with their provision, someone put a drinking cup in the saddlebag of his brother Benjamin. Then it so happened that a crier called, O oh, men of the caravan carrying the corn, you are most surely thieves. They, men of the caravan, said, turning towards them, What is it that you are missing? They said, We find the king's measuring vessel missing, and added, Whoever restores it shall receive a camel load of corn as a reward. And one of them said, I am surely responsible for it. They replied, By Allah, you know well that we did not come to commit mischief in this country, nor are we professional thieves. They, the Egyptians, said, What shall be the punishment for this theft if you are proved to be liars? They replied, The punishment for this is that he in whose saddlebag this vessel is found shall himself be the penalty for it and so he himself shall be confiscated as his forfeit. This is how we punish the wrongdoers. Then he, the king's herald, began the search with the sacks of others before he came to the sack of his brother Benjamin. Finding the vessel therein, he brought it out of his brother's sack. That is how we contrived for Joseph to keep Benjamin with him, otherwise he could not have taken his brother according to the king's law. Yet it came about as Allah willed. We raise in degrees of rank whomsoever we will. And over and above every possessor of knowledge, there is one almighty God who is all-knowing. Joseph's brother said, If he has stolen, no wonder a brother of his had also committed theft before this. But Joseph kept it secret in his heart and did not disclose it to them. He simply said, you are a worse case, and Allah knows best what you are alleging. Brothers of Joseph said, O noble chief, surely he has an old father, advanced in years, so retain one of us in his place. Surely we see you to be of the doers of good to all. He said, God forbid that we take anyone except the one with whom we found our property, for otherwise we would of course be unjust. When they were despaired of moving him, they retired to confer together in private. One of their leaders said, Are you not aware that your father has bound you to a solemn pledge in the name of Allah? And how before this you fell short of your duty in respect of Joseph? Never will I therefore leave this land until my father gives me permission, or Allah, who is the best of judges, decides the matter for me. Return all of you to your father and say, Our father, your son, has committed the theft. And we say no more than what we know, and we did not witness him stealing, and we could not be guardians over what was unseen by us. And you may inquire of the inhabitants of the city we were in, and of the people of the caravan, carrying the corn we accompanied. We speak nothing but the truth. So when reaching home, Jacob's sons gave all this information to him. Jacob said, Nay, it is not so. Rather, your baser selves have embellished to you another abominable thing. So now showing patience is befitting. It is not far from the grace of Allah to bring them all to me, for he is indeed the all-knowing, the all-wise. And he turned away from them and said, Oh, my grief for Joseph! And his eyes were drowned with tears for the pangs of grief, and he was suppressing his sorrow. They said, By Allah, you will not cease mentioning Joseph until you are consumed away for some disease or become of the perished. He replied, I complain of my anguish and of my sorrow to Allah alone. 
I know from Allah what you do not know. Go, my sons, and make a thorough search for Joseph and his brother. Do not despair of Allah's soothing mercy. Verily, none but the people who deny the truth can ever lose hope of Allah's soothing mercy. And when they, Joseph's brothers, came again before him, they said, O noble chief, distress and poverty due to famine has befallen us and our family. We have brought only a scanty amount of money. Give us none the less full measure of corn, and show us charity. Surely Allah rewards the charitable. Joseph said, Are you aware what you did to Joseph and his brother in your ignorance? They were startled and said, Are you Joseph? Yes, you are Joseph indeed. He said, Yes, I am Joseph, and this is my brother Benjamin. Allah has indeed been gracious to us. As a matter of fact, he who guards against evil, seeking refuge in him, and patiently perseveres, will find that Allah suffers not the reward of the doers of good to others to be lost. They said, By Allah, Allah has surely exalted you above us, and we have indeed been guilty. Joseph said, No reproach from me shall be on you this day. May Allah forgive you. He is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Go with this, my shirt, and lay it before my father. He will come to know the whole affair and as well believe, and bring to me the whole of your family. So when the caravan with the corn departed from Egypt, their father said, If you do not pronounce my judgment to be weak and unsound, let me tell you that I do scent the power of Joseph. They, people of Joseph's household, said, By Allah, you are still suffering from your old delusion. And when the bearer of the happy tidings came to Jacob, he laid it, the shirt, before him, and he became enlightened about the true state of affairs. He said, Did I not tell you that I know from Allah what you do not know? They said, Our father, pray that our sins are forgiven to us, for certainly we have been sinful. He, Jacob, said, I will certainly pray to my Lord to forgive you. Surely he is the most forgiving, the ever merciful. And when they all came to Joseph, he betook his parents to himself for a restful lodging, and said, Enter the city, if Allah will. You shall always be safe and secure. And he took his parents to the royal court, and they all fell down prostrate before God because of him, and he said, My father, this is the real fulfillment of my vision of old. My Lord has made it come true. He has been gracious to me, indeed when he released me out of the prison and brought you from the desert. This all happened after Satan had stirred up discord between me and my brothers. Surely my Lord is beneficent to whomsoever he pleases. He it is who is the all-knowing, the all-wise. Addressing his Lord, Joseph then said, My Lord, you have bestowed a part of the sovereignty upon me and it is you who have imparted me true knowledge of the significance of divine sayings. O you, the originator of the heavens and the earth, you alone are my patron in this world and the hereafter. Let it be that I die in a state of complete submission to you. Let it be that I join the righteous. Prophet, this narrative is a part of the important news of the hidden realities which we reveal to you. You were not present with these enemies of yours when they agreed upon their plan against you, and they are still hatching subtle plots. And many people, even though you ardently desire it, will not at all believe, while you ask them for no wages for it. On the other hand, this Qur'an is but a source of eminence and glory for all humankind. And many are the signs in the heavens and the earth which they pass by turning away arrogantly from them. In fact, most of them believe not in Allah without at the same time ascribing partners to him. Do they then 
feel secure from the coming of an overwhelming punishment on them from Allah or the sudden coming of the hour upon them, taking them unaware? Say, this is my path. I call to Allah. I am on sure knowledge verifiable by reason, and so are those who follow me. I believe that holy is Allah. I am not of the polytheists. And we sent none as messengers before you, but they were men from among the people of the townships to whom we revealed our will. Have they not then journeyed in the land, and seen how was the end of their predecessors? Indeed, the abode of the hereafter holds out better promises for those who guard against evil and keep their duty. Will you not then refrain from disbelief and unrighteous deeds? It always happened with the previous messengers as well. They went on with their teachings, till when those messengers despaired of believing on the part of their people. And they, the people of their nation, thought that they have been told only lies in the name of revelations. Our help reached these messengers suddenly, delivering those whom we pleased. Surely our punishment is not averted from the people who sever their ties with us. Most assuredly, the narratives of the people gone by contain lessons for the people possessed of pure and clear understanding. This Qur'an is no forged narrative. It is a fulfillment of those prophecies contained in the scriptures which were before it, and is a detailed exposition of all things, and a guide, and a mercy, to a people who believe.